Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from VisitAutomation.com and welcome to another video for automating Flutter app with Flutter driver video course. And in this video, we are going to be talking about creating first Flutter application with the configuration that we did in our previous video. All right, so let's get started. In our previous video, we saw how to configure Flutter driver, at least not in a full practical manner, but we saw in a theoretical manner that what are the things that we require within our IDE and what are the installations that we need to be doing something like flutter and the flutter is going to install dart and once you run the flutter doctor you will see what are the installations being done within your machine as a configuration and then you can start seeing the different ways of errors and how to resolve those errors and stuffs so in this video we are going to be creating our first ever flutter code so for doing that i'm just going to go over here within the uh, within the explorer and then I'm just going to do command shift P to open the quick navigation. And from here, you can see that there is something called as Flutter new project. So this way you can create a new project in Flutter. So once I open this, you can see that uh, it is going to ask you the name to be entered for the project. So I'm going to give a name as Flutter automation. So this is the application name basically. And it says that the Flutter project name should be all lower cases with underscore to separate the word. So why not just give this as Flutter automation, something like this. Uh, and I will give an underscore. I'm gonna hit enter here. So then it asked me a folder where I need to be creating my folder. So I'm just gonna select Karthi KK, which is my root directory. And then I'm gonna create the folder over there within my root directory. That's it. And once I do that, it's gonna scaffold all the codings for me, like all the different templates which is required for the Flutter to be done. And you can see that it says that all done, which means the uh, Flutter has been completely uh, uh, created for me and also shows me the uh, actual working code. So basically I have not even written even a single line of code. I'm not an expert in the Flutter app development. And you can see that the code is written for me and I can even run a very, very super simple application here. I'm not really gonna jump into the actual details over here that you can see in the Flutter automation. I'm basically gonna run the code and I will show you how the code is basically gonna be executing within my actual emulator that I have shown in our previous video. So if you remember, in our previous video, I showed you this particular emulator uh, from Android. So I'm gonna run my app within this particular emulator. So for doing that, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the terminal of Visual Studio IDE and I'm gonna type Flutter build APK. So if you type Flutter build APK, it is for Android. And if you type Flutter build iOS, then it's gonna be for the iOS uh, operating system. So I'm just gonna run the Flutter build APK for now so that it is gonna build an APK for the Android and then it's gonna create that APK and hold that for me. So you can see that some things are happening in here. There we go. And now I need to actually install the application within this particular emulator. So for doing that, all I need to do is this. I need to just do flutter of run. So this is the only command like flutter run, which is gonna run the flutter and it's gonna launch the application within my emulator, which is available. So you can see that it is saying something like launching lib slash main dot dot on Android SDK, which means this lib slash main dot dot is something which is responsible for performing some actions. So we'll be discussing about that in a minute, but just that you can see that once I created a new project, it automatically created a, a working code for me over here. So this is the app bar, and within the app bar, you also have a button here, and you can see that this button is something designed in the material design of Google. Uh, and once I hit this one, two, three, four, five, six, how many times I click it, it just creates a number there. So it's like a stateful uh, widget. And this is like a stateless widget because it's just performing an action there. And everything is happening within the Flutter app, which is really, really cool. So I could see that everything is happening without me doing even a single line of code. And it says like Flutter demo homepage. And the reason why I said that 
it is a Flutter demo homepage is because I'm gonna show you the cool feature of the Flutter itself, which is nothing but the heart reload. So as we know that the code is actually executing from the main dart dart. So if I click that, this particular thing comes in and you can see that this is the uh, one file which is responsible for the application that we are seeing in here uh, to be rendered. And you can see that uh, there is this particular uh, main title uh, main homepage title it says flutter homepage flutter demo homepage so why not just change this to uh, execute automation homepage or something like that i'm just gonna save this but saving doesn't really reflect anything in here but once i hit the r and you can see that to hot reload changes while running press r to hot reload uh, i'm just gonna press the r right now and you can see that instantly it changed it to execute automation homepage pretty awesome right so if you just compare the same thing with Xamarin or Ionic or any other app developer platform that you used before, there was no such thing called hot reload. And every time if you make any changes, you need to build the app, you need to then deploy within the iOS or the Android emulator, and then you need to see the changes. But in here, once you make the changes, things are gonna be appearing for you instantly, as you can see here, which is really awesome. So this is how you can actually create a super simple project within the Flutter. But then let's turn our attention back to this particular stuff that you are seeing in here. As you can see, for every different platforms like Android and iOS, you can see there is a separate folder. And once you perform the Flutter build APK, then it is gonna create this particular stuff for you. Something like uh, the app, then the source, and the debug and you can see that uh, there is a particular uh, manifest file and you can also see the different files required for building the android application over here and similarly for the ios you can see that these are the xcode stuff so basically you need to have xcode to run the ios initially for the first time at least for signing the application but yes these are something that we'll be discussing in our upcoming videos but these are the files that you can see within the iOS folder of the Flutter app that is being created. And then comes the lib folder. So the lib folder has only one file, which is the main dart, dart file. And this is where all the magic actually happens. So this main dart, dart file actually has something called as a class main app, and it extends a stateless widget. And once again, as I said before, there are two types of widget available. One is stateless widget, and another one is the stateful widget. And this is a stateless widget where it actually has a, a widget of uh, the actual application, which is nothing but the home page. And within this home page, you can see that it is a stateful widget. The reason is because it actually has this number changing stuff in here. Uh, and that's exactly what has happened. It has the title uh, and it has an increment counter where it is incrementing this particular value. And it also had uh, something called as a floating action button this one which actually Increments the value every time you click it So every time you click that it's gonna call an on pressed event and this on press event is gonna call the increment counter method that has been created and then it's gonna set the state and within the set state method is gonna call the counter to be incremented from a value and then you'll be seeing that particular value being displayed within this particular text box over here in the text side, right? So this is how things are actually happening and the code is very, very simple and super straightforward. And you can see since this is a template code generated automatically, you can see all the detailed explanation of what this each and every piece of code are actually doing. So you can see that there is this blue color. Uh, so if I change this to uh, maybe amber and uh, save it and if I hit R, so you can see that this particular color get changed and also the button color get changed, right? So everything is happening automatically due to the hot reload. And the final folder that we'll be seeing is the test folder. So this is the test folder where we'll be working in our rest of this particular uh, series, where you're gonna see that it has a widget underscore test dart dart and it has some stuffs over here. So you can see that this particular code actually has something like an await of tester uh, pump widget, uh, which is going to call this particular my app, which is going to perform some actions on setting up the uh, applications and stuff. And within this uh, test, it says like expect find of test of zero, find uh, text of one, 
and then tap and then test of pump uh, and stuff again don't worry about these chords yet these are some of the chords which is going to be happening during the execution of this particular uh, application itself so we'll be discussing about that in our upcoming videos but as of now this is where your actual tests are happening and you can see this find which is pretty much exactly like how you're gonna find an element using text and stuff and this tap of course is going to bring you an idea of what it's basically going to do it's going to tap the plus icon to trigger the frame and the rest of these particular files are pretty much exactly the same file that you expect this is the git ignore file so it's going to ignore all these files automatically created and these are the metadata files and these are the packages which has been uh, which has been added and then this is where the pubspec.yaml files where you're going to hold all the different packages for your application so this is where you're going to be doing the flutter test sdk being added and then you're going to add other dev dependency packages pretty much like how you do in the npm for the package.json file and but in here it's just pubspecs.yaml file so this is where all things are being added for all your packages so that's it guys this is how we can create a first super simple flutter application starting our next video we'll try to run the test and we'll also start adding the new test cases within our flutter driver